Breast cancer is one of the largest medical problems faced today. Um, one in eight women will be diagnosed with breast cancer at some point in their lifetime. Therefore, it's an area where building new tools uh, to more effectively diagnose the disease and cure the disease can have a major impact on a large proportion of the population. So the central mission of pathology has not changed that much in the past few hundred years. It's always been to provide the most useful diagnosis for the patient. Um, but what has changed tremendously is the amount of data at our disposal about the patient and about the tissue sample, including things like genomic data, transcriptomic data, lots of different morphologic data types. And really the goal of computational pathology is to enable the pathologist to most effectively integrate these data to provide the most useful diagnosis for the patient. Over the past um, five years, there have been huge advances in fields like artificial intelligence and high-performance computing. And one major aim of Path AI and Philips is to see how can we develop technologies integrating these new approaches to make significant impacts on improving how we can diagnose uh, diseases like breast cancer. Uh, in pathology, we hope that with the use of deep learning technology, uh, we're able to make pathologists uh, more accurate, uh, efficient, as well as consistent. The evolution of deep learning uh, has been very staggering over the past few years. It has actually, you know, the performance has improved uh, considerably such that, uh, you know, the algorithms are even starting to challenge humans. It started with a large data set that was already analyzed by pathologists. So pathologists had, you know, gone into the image and labeled, this is cancer, this is normal. Uh, then we extracted a lot of examples from these images uh, and fed it into our deep learning systems. So they learned to identify cancer, you know, pretty good. But then we realized there was a number of uh, areas where they were making mistakes. We took those uh, regions uh, and fed them back into the classifier to improve the performance uh, of the system. And that actually uh, allowed the system to improve continuously. Um, achieving an extremely high performance. They're performing much better than, I think, any systems people had seen previously in pathology um, in terms of identifying where cancer is in a uh, histopathology image. Um, and the best systems did quite well by themselves, and pathologists do quite well by themselves and, and make not that many errors. But the truly exciting and potentially transformative thing was when you combine the results of the expert human pathologists with the results of the top performing systems, you saw a significant reduction in the overall error rate, showing that the best system really is a combination of the strengths of the pathologist with the strengths of the computational system and that system performs much better than either one alone. So the really exciting part uh, is you know, being able to integrate these systems into clinical workflows uh, such that they can learn continuously from the pathologist, uh, enabling the pathologist uh, to focus more uh, on the complex tasks while the machine handles uh, the more rudimentary aspects. So partnerships are extremely important to building the best products for pathologists. Um, Building effective tools in computational pathology requires expertise in clinical pathology and knowing the workflow of the clinic in things like high performance computing and artificial intelligence, um, as well as in the field generally of digital pathology and things like um, whole site imaging. And to really uh, execute most effectively on each of these different areas, partnerships really enables that to happen. And that's why we're so thrilled to be working with Philips, um, who bring enormous expertise in many of these areas, uh, and we can really build something great together. I think that would be much stronger than either one of us alone.